Hello and welcome back to another episode of Arcanum. So I believe this is the final episode. We are going to go to the void and we are going to destroy the being that is trying to come back. Uh, so a couple of things. Um, one, Raven, I think she will leave us. So you definitely want to be careful How may I help about what she has on her. I didn't give her, I didn't give her anything important. I uh, just stacked her up with some arrows in case we are able to talk her into coming with us. Um, I guess we could take her ring off of her. Maybe her helmet. Uh, yeah, so we'll take this, those things off of her. We can give it to uh, Virgil if we needed to. So let's try to get her to go to the ring of Brodger. Alright, so we should meet Nazrud Naz Naz in here. And then he's going to banish us. Let's switch over. You also want to make sure you have everything on you. You want to make sure you have your Vandegroth device. You want to make sure you have enough potions or bullets or uh, whatever you use. Um, you want to make sure you have all those things on you. Uh, you also want to make sure that you have a uh, all of your skills leveled up. I didn't. I'm not a, a fighter by sorts, but I do have um, from the bonuses that we got enough melee to do a lot of damage um, and enough dodge so if I could fight with a sword if I wanted to uh, so we'll think about that here in the in the future all right so let's uh let's try to get I'm gonna save and then I'm gonna try to get Raven to come with us um, I'm not sure if it's gonna be buggy still or not well, let's talk to uh, Nazardin are you prepared to face Aranax? Yeah, so she just left. Why are you delaying? Time is of the- I'm... I'm sorry. I didn't want this to happen. I'm trying so hard to be strong. Raven, what's wrong? I... I don't know. I've never really had to face what I feel about all this until right now. I'm not afraid. I know that we have the strength to overcome Aranex when the time comes. It's just that, well... What? What is it? It's... it's you. I guess I shouldn't say that I'm not afraid. I am afraid. Afraid of what I feel. For you, I mean. You see, not long ago I'd have given my life a thousand times for my people with no thought and no regret. But now, here with you, I... I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said anything. No, please continue. I... I've never felt this way. There has never been anyone in my village who I... Well, I don't know. I'm... I'm making such a mess of all of this. Just tell me, Raven. I just wanted you to know that when we fight Aranax, that I won't be fighting for Kintara or Arcanum, or even for myself. I will fight for what I will have when I come home. Do you understand? Yes, I feel the same way, Raven. By the blood which flows in my veins... By the elven magics older than love itself, I pledge my heart to you. I am yours. I will always be yours. Raven, my love. No. No more words. We have so little time, let us not waste it. Yes. I think it's time we return, my love. And will you return with me? As if I leave you now. Together we will face whatever is to come. Yes, together. Okay, good. She didn't bug out. Um, so we have Raven in our party. And we can now go through with this whole ordeal. Are you prepared to face Yes, Aranax? I'm prepared. Then it is time. May your gods accompany you to the other side and help you to stop Aranax. They had better, or we'll all in be in for a bit of trouble. All right, here we are in the void, and uh, we're surrounded by enemies right now. We'll have to clear this uh, place out. Um, so there's several places that have teleporters, like this one right here, and there's one right here. This is a return one, I believe. We can't get on to this. Eh, maybe we can. I think this is a return one, though. We need to make our way to this one here.
So these uh, lizards, they have this uh, meat on them. You can grab this, and it's for one of the uh, banished characters in the game that you can join up with. You only need one. All right, that's the first floor. Let's go to the second floor now. All right, that's this floor. Um, I did level up, so I'm at level 48 now. Not too bad. I might, uh, yeah, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do yet with this. I definitely need dexterity. That's probably the most helpful one right now. Increasing my speed. Maybe some strength if I need to uh, carry more things. 
As far as magic schools go, I don't really know if I need anything inside of here. I mean, one of the best things I could probably do is maybe um, Necromantic White and do Resurrection if I needed to, but I'm not quite sure yet. Let's move on. All right, so this is uh, Aranax's cell. Okay, uh, yes, of course. We were told to expect visitors. Aranax is inside. Feel free to enter and speak with him. Thank you and good day. All right, let's go talk to Aranax. Yes? What is it? Aranex, I presume? Your presumption is correct. And who might I have the pleasure of addressing? I am Mariska. Well, what brings you to my corner of oblivion? Um... Enough with the pleasantries, Aranex. I've come to stop you. Interesting. And just what is it that you are going to stop me from doing? I have so many things on my social calendar these days, it is difficult to know which you are making reference to in particular. I will not permit you to escape the void and return to Arcanum. You will not permit me? How droll! You really have absolutely no idea what you are involved with here, do you? To be honest, I have become involved in events beyond my control. That is a feeling I have much familiarity with. Sometimes I feel that my fate was decreed from an early age. You are here because of your actions, not some cruel twist of fate. Do not misunderstand me. I take full responsibility for my actions. Though, how are one's actions determined, really? How is our view of the world shaped? Mine was shaped by arguably the most powerful individual in the world, my father. He raised me on tales of the righteous superiority of the elves and the destiny that brought us to rule over all the races. I don't think it was Nazrudin's intent that you destroy a whole city. What did he expect? He shoved a young, immature, and inexperienced fool into a position of immense power and set me loose on the world. Why didn't he stop me? He should have stopped me. Wait, are you trying to tell me you feel guilt over what you did? Most certainly. I have had 2,000 years of my grievous errors and judgment replaying themselves in my mind. One tends to grow a bit of a conscience in all that time. Where was your new conscience when you threatened my life? I did no such thing. I've been here for ages. Do you really think I could reach across the void to torment you? I tire of your lies. <laughs> you fool! You think this is my protection? This is my prison! I've been trapped inside this shell for nearly 2,000 years! Wait, that's impossible. This must be some sort of trick. I assure you, it is not a light-hearted jest, though I wish that it were. I have been trapped here since soon after I was banished to this realm. Who could have possibly trapped someone of your power here? This is Kurgan's doing. When I first came here and realized what he was becoming, I attempted to stop him. Our battle was intense, yet brief. As you can see, I was not the victor. Why didn't he kill you? He wasn't powerful enough. He held me with this binding magic when I was regenerating. It looks as if I was correct as to the effects of his experimentation, though. His dark magics have transformed him hideously, in body and spirit. What happened when you had him banished? Nothing, strangely enough. He went quietly to his fate. Sounds like a coward to me. I wouldn't attribute his attitude to cowardice. He was resigned to his fate. Somewhat like me, he would not change his course or compromise his beliefs, regardless of the inevitable outcome. 
His brilliance was such that I don't think any of us understood what was going through his mind, actually. It almost sounds as if you admire him. Fascination would be a more appropriate term. I am intrigued by the workings of his brilliant, twisted mind. Have no doubt, though, I would destroy him without a second thought were the opportunity to present itself. Do you think he could be behind all this? Being that I am trapped in here, my opportunities to get information are, shall we say, a bit limited. On the rare occasion Kurgan has deigned to visit me to play his intellectual games, he has dropped some veiled clues that might make sense in light of what you've told me. If I had to hazard a guess, I would say Kurgan is impersonating me. To what end? It sounds as if these dark elves you mentioned have patterned themselves after the misguided philosophy of my youth. They are proving to be powerful allies in his quest to return to Arcanum, it seems. I doubt they would be willing to help Kurgan the terrible return to exact his revenge. So Kurgan is the one I'm here to stop. That would appear to be the case. If you were able to facilitate my release from this prison, it would be my pleasure to help you destroy Kurgan. Uh, I'm not sure if I can trust you. Your hesitation is understandable. Perhaps you should gain an audience with Kurgan himself. I think a conversation with him will erase any doubt as to the veracity of my claims. Where is he? How do I find him? I do not know. There is a portal in the room behind me. Perhaps you can use it to travel to the other parts of the void. I will go and speak with him then. Okay, so now we know that it is not Aranax. It is actually Kurrigan who's actually trying to escape the void. So we have to go and find Kurrigan now. Okay, so if you do want to uh, have Aranax join your party, I'm actually going to need some more charisma. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get uh, an extra point so I can have up to four spells at one time. And then I'm going to get some more charisma so my party members can be three. Let's see. There we go. Twelve. I still have points to play with. Um, but what we can do now is... You have more you wish to speak to me about? We can have him join a party. I'm here to release you. I'm afraid I do not know. I do not believe Kurgan could maintain this from a distance, so there must be something near here. Okay. So what we need to do now is uh, kill the guards and the snake here. Nothing from Snake. Let's go talk to Aranox. Many thanks for releasing me from my horribly lengthy incarceration, sir. I am at your service. It is high time we showed Kerrigan the error of his ways. We could do well to recruit some help. I know some beings in this realm that we might be able to convince to follow us. Perhaps you have heard of them. The Bane of Cree, Gorgoth, and Krakatoa. You think they would join us? We can only hope. We will have to convince them that Kurgan is a danger to them as well. How do we find them? I don't know. We will need to find a way to navigate amongst the different land masses of the void using the ancient portals. Let's go. Alright, so we have to go through this door here. And then we can get through this portal. And... In this portal, we can actually. There's a layer here we can go to actually get to Kurgan. So let's kill these guys. Alright. Nothing on these guys. So, what. There's two options. You can go. Who is a guy here?
Okay. This portal here will take you to the, um, it's like a ring of portals, and that's where all the, uh, you can travel throughout the area, um, the whole void. So if you want to go and visit the other champions, uh, you can. Uh, I'm not going to do that because I don't have the party size available to me. I could spend all my points in Charisma and then do that, but I have a pretty good party now. Um, I think everybody in here is pretty useful. So I'm not, I don't really need to do that, but um, that's what the meat's for. You can get the uh, Gorgoth with the meat, and then you need to bring the Eye of Shakator or Shakar, or whatever his name is. You need to bring the Eye with you, which is, which is found in the first Panari Temple. So that's another place, uh, another thing you need to get. Uh, for now, I'm just going to go ahead and go to this lair. Um, there's also some cool weapons you can get by exploring the void. Um, if you're melee, there's some really good swords you can get. So for now, I'm going to go through the uh, place here and defeat Kurgan. So this is a typical dungeon. I think it has three levels in it. Yeah, here's the doors right here. Who are you? I am Grinder Silverhammer. Tell me, did Stenner reach you? Yes, but he died before he could tell me what was happening. Stenner, how did he die? He perished in a horrible Zeppelin crash. Zeppelin? What is that? It's an airship, a boat that flies, suspended under a large balloon. What? I've never heard such a thing. How is this possible? The world has changed greatly since you've been here. No doubt, driven by dwarf ingenuity and technological advances. After Bates' engine, the humans began developing machines. So our folly haunts us once again. If only we had harnessed that boy's ideas, what might have been, well, that is of no consequence now. If we hadn't made some error in judgment, the Dark Elves could exploit, another clan would have. Can you tell me what happened? The Dark Elves had been lying in wait, looking for a way to bring some doors over to this side. They knew the technology would eventually weaken the wards to the point of failure. 
but they decided to accelerate the process. They needed a machine to open the rift back up by distorting the already weakened wards. An elf couldn't make the machine to save his life. And Bates made his steam engine. Exactly. Somehow they convinced King Longhair to banish us. We were shocked, so to say the least. But our king had spoken. We were told our banishment was to the Isle of Despair. But this was where we ended up. We can only assume our king knew nothing of their true intent. I don't believe he did. As soon as we arrived here, we were beaten mercilessly and thrown in chains. As our work progressed on the gate, Stenner formulated a plan. As soon as the gate had any functionality, he would go through an attempt to warn the other side. We knew that his absence would be noticed and that they would try to stop him. Please go on. He began a preparations to disguise himself as a gnome. He starved himself to the point of sickness, and when he, when the gate was near readiness, he shaved his beard. He believed that the full responsibility of what had befallen us was his. He would do whatever it, he thought was necessary to make things right, even that. What happened after he, he went through? They tortured some of the clan to force us to reveal his plans, but we wouldn't break. We knew they needed us to finish the gate, and <laughs> we had been disabling the gate in various ways for months. For all they knew, we still had months ahead of us to finish the thing, when we could have been finished months before. And then? They killed half the clan in a last effort to force us to talk. We still did not break, and now we are all that is left of our once great clan. I will return to free you when I have killed those responsible. So this is it. There's like seven or eight of people left. Yeah. Okay. Alright, this is it. This is the final place before we go to talk to Kurgan and fight the final battle. So we are level 49. Um, if I would have went to the other places in the void, I would have been 50 by now. But that's not that big of a deal for our uh, abilities. We have a lot of magical abilities. So I'm going to just kind of speed up the process of regeneration. And save, and then we will be off to fight. Greetings. Long have I waited for your arrival, and finally this moment has come. I am Kurgan, first of the Necromancers, Voyager in the Lands of the Dead. Okay, so what um, we could do here is I can just attack him. We can try to talk him out of it. Um, we have Aaron X with us, so it's going to help with him inside of uh, helping us. And then um, we can join him too. There's other op another option to join him. And if you're evil, that's probably the best bet is just to join him. And he'll give you a quest to uh, kill every other entity inside of um, the void here. So uh, what I'm going to do is take the good route, as I've been doing the whole game, and kill him to finally put an end to the evil of Arcanum. I see. Not exactly the person I originally expected. I would think not. 
Although the presence of Aranax tells me you already know much of my tale, at least as much as he deemed necessary in order to bring you into his confidence. He told me enough I've come to put an end to your madness. <laughs> powerful you are, very powerful. But remember the lesson I once taught you. Remember that, and listen to the words I have to say. Very well, your time is short. These words will be your elegy. My life in the world you call Arcanum seems so very distant. The memories clouded like those of a child, and a child I was then, probing the darker magics, given glimpses of the truths yet to come. The council knew the evil of those magics. Look at you. Yes. Look at me. And what do you see? A monster? An abomination? You've no idea what I've discovered. You see with eyes tainted by life and all which that accursed state embodies. My vision is clear because of those magics you hold in disdain. And the council, it is they I have to thank for. Why? Because they punished you? Try to stop you? <laughs> In your world, your Arcanum, I was powerful. Perhaps the most powerful human magicka who has ever been. But to humans, cursed with our shortness of life, our brevity, what is this power? What can be learned in that impermanent spark that is our lives? Nothing. But here, in this so-called prison, there are no limits. There is no end. I don't understand. This place, this void, has no time as you know it. I've been here for more than two thousand of your years, and yet I've aged not at all. I feel as I did the moment they sent me here, or as when the Dark Elves first called to me. Do you now see? Here I can do everything I did in your world, but I am unfettered by the chains of mortality that time hangs upon us. Fine, then stay here and leave our world be. I truly wish I could. My reasons for returning aren't what you'd think. I have no aspirations for power or domination like your companion Aranax did. Aspirations that I became the victim of. No. Those are the motivations of the living, and I no longer place myself among them. Then what is it that you want? If only I could show you the places I've seen, you might understand the things I say. I've been to the desolate lands, wandered by those souls who still see the lands of the living, but wear the cloak of the dead. Blind to their own ends, they cry, passing through one another like shadows in the dying light of day. I've traveled to where souls rot in torment, pierced with the jagged shards of life and vision, clinging to memory, regrets of the flesh. I saw that this prison was of their own making, and the key was in unknowing, in release. And still, I traveled on. And finally, I came to the place where souls go to die, where the mirrored and worn spirits fall into an endless sea of gray, mirrored glass. And I lowered myself within, and laid there among them. And I almost did not return. And do you know what I found there? There, among the silent and battered shells of the innumerable? Peace. Enlightenment. Truth. Only then did I realize that this place, this life, is an abomination. A horrible distortion of the natural order. This life who mothered pain and fear and envy, these twisted children who exist only because we are here to feed them, to nourish them. This life, this afterthought, a disturbance, a mere ripple in that great, 
Dead Sea. Not even the cause, but merely an effect. Sending these souls upward, screaming for release from the day they are torn from their waters. The effect of what? I do not know, nor do I care. Have you ever spoken with the dead? Called to them from this side? Pull them from their silent rest? Do you know what it is that they feel? Pain. Pain when torn into this wakefulness. This reminder of the chaos from which they had escaped. Pain at having to live. There will be no more pain. There will be no more chaos. I see your soul, Traveler. It screams, tattered and spinned. Do you feel its pull? Do you hear its wailing? It is within my power to calm these waters, and that is what I shall do. Suppose that's a different sort of way to look at things? Hold, hold on a moment. Might I speak with you? Of course, Virgil. What he is saying, it's not completely untrue. I've seen the places he speaks of, felt the peace and serenity of that great dead sea. It's not something I'll ever forget. What are you saying, Virgil? Do you agree with Kurgan? Of course not. I made my choice a long time ago, and I choose to stand with you. Yes, there is pain in life, pain and loss and sorrow. But there is also joy and the pleasures of growing and learning. You can't have one without the other, and I wouldn't want to sacrifice either. But in the end, I stand with you, whatever your choice. Thank you, Virgil. And as for you, Kirgan. I can no longer tolerate the atrocities that this thing, this life, has brought about. There will be peace. There will be quiet. Life will no longer be. And so I go to Arcanum to be an end to it. And then I will join the souls of the dead when it is done. Okay, so you can choose this one if you want to agree with him and talk him or talk with him and join him. Uh, this one is what I'm going to choose, though. I see you're really quite mad, you know. Am I? It all depends on your point of view. Take yourself, for example. You've been told from the beginning of your adventure that you're the second coming of Nazruddin, the return of the living one. Do you believe it? It's not really important. Either way, you're going to die. I shall send you to that great dead sea, and then you shall know. Alright, so I had to go ahead and shift some stuff around. Make sure I had everybody, um, had the right stuff on them. And everybody's buffed up now. I don't know who's attacking, so I'm going to wait till I see who's attacking, and then I'm going to uh, give them a shield. And... I'm going to give some people Agility of Fire. Most likely I'll give Raven Agility of Fire. And probably Dog too. Yeah, Dog's going to destroy this guy. He's going <laughs> to... Okay. Yeah, that's not too bad for one round. I have uh, speed on me, so I'm going to be able to get off a lot of spells. You can't disintegrate them. Uh, if you do, uh, it ruins the game. So you have to kill him. And I don't even know if disintegrate will even work on him. We do have to use the uh, the device on him, too, when he gets low enough. Thank <laughs> you. 
Because you delivered the secret ingredient to Jungle Dun, he perfected his alchemical process and eventually found a way to make gold from common lead. Needless to say, he became the richest man in all of our kingdom. The defeat of Lucan and his henchmen, coupled with your freeing of the ghost of Bessie Toon, enabled Shrouded Hills to grow and become a thriving community once again. A new silver vein is discovered in the old Bessie Toon mine. Workers pour into town by the dozens, and within a few years, Shrouded Hills is a bustling boom town. Such towns often have problems keeping the peace. Shrouded Hills has no such trouble, mainly due to the efforts of their new sheriff, Doc Roberts. Because of the death of Darian Mog, Clan Mog soon found itself overrun by Pollock and his gang, and quickly vanished. Without an opponent to challenge him, Pollock set his sights beyond the boil, and it wasn't long before all of Tarant was shadowy and crime-ridden. Maximilian was returned to Dernholm, and all of Cumbria rejoiced in the return of their rightful king. Under the new rule of Maximilian, Cumbria quickly grew into a powerful nation, embracing both magic and technology. And once again, the proud banner of the Dragon Knights flew from the ramparts of Dernholm Castle, set there by their new captain, Liana Peldar. The long-standing deception of the Panari by the Dark Elves was finally brought to light. Alexander became the new High Priest of the Panari, and he wrote a new chapter for the Archeon based on his experiences with the Living One. Because you convinced the Mayor of Blackroot to rejoin Cumbria, there is a small struggle between Maximilian and the Industrial Council concerning ownership of the town. Maximilian was determined to defend his own, and he was successful in doing so. Under the protection of their new king, Blackroot grew into one of the most important port cities in all of Arcanum. Under the continued leadership of Logair Thunderstone, the Wheel Clan came out of seclusion and rejoined the world. Logair himself lived for more than 800 years, and songs are still sung about his bravery and courage. The Bedokan continued to live in the dark fens, fighting here and there with loggers and poachers, but mainly keeping to themselves. They continued to live the primitive lives of nomad hunters, and they never spoke with the elves of Kintara again. Upon returning to Arcanum, Aranax buried his father on the Isle of Thanatos. Later, he traveled to the Vendigroth Wastes, and there used his powers, and single-handedly raised the city from the ruins it had become. Vendigroth again became a place of awe and wonder. Yet, after all of this, Arcanum is still what it always was, a place of possibility, a place of change. One thing is certain, and that is that nothing at all is ever certain in this place. Who's to say what the future holds for the land we call Arcanum? All right, that's going to be the end of the game. Um, I think we hit most of our points in this game. And with the exception of Dungal uh, actually succeeding with his recipe. And there is a quest to... Uh, save Tarant as well, but that's all right. We kind of, I kind of cared more about the other uh, places than Tarant. So that's going to be it. Uh, I thank you for watching the series. If you've, <laughs> if you got to this point by now, you've probably watched quite a few of these, but that's the end of the game. The game's really good. And I hope to see you in my other series. Well, this is the end and I hope you enjoyed it. Goodbye.